Alright, so now we're going to go into chapter 3. So in chapter 3, we're going to talk about substance across the plasma membrane. So our focus is mainly on our plasma membrane. So the plasma membrane itself is not actually something that is very rigid. It's actually quite fluid. So that's why the name of our plasma membrane is the fluid mosaic model. Why is it named Fluid Mosaic Model? Because Brian and Singer in the year of 1786, he both of them discovered that the plasma membrane acts similarly as a tile on the ground, but they are also fluid in nature. The distribution of the proteins inside the plasma membrane or on top of the plasma membrane are similar like tiles. They are arranged in very random manner and they look like a tile and they are fluid allowing only certain substances to move through and other substances cannot come through. So we say that the plasma membrane are semi-permeable. So what does this mean? It means that only certain substance can pass through. So the main component of our plasma membrane is actually the phospholipid bilayer. So our phospholipid bilayer consists of a unit of phospholipid. So here we have our phospholipid bilayer. Two layers of phospholipid stack together on top of each other like a sandwich. So the first part of our phospholipid is what we call as the hydrophilic head. So this hydrophilic head love, love water. So they are fine to maintain their environment above them that have water in it. So this hydrophilic head, the word philic in Latin means love. And this head is actually made of phosphate. And then we have our hydrophobic tail. Which is made up of fatty acids. And this hydrophobic tail are actually phobia to water. They don't like water. So they hate water. Alright. So these are made up of a chain of fatty acid that are binded to the phosphate group. So together they are called phospholipid. And they start to make up the first two layer of our plasma membrane. Now we are going to talk about the other parts of our plasma membrane. So we're going to start with the first one here, this structure. This is the cholesterol. So the cholesterol, they actually allow the phospholipid to be fluid or rigid. If your cholesterol concentration or percentage is high, what happens? Your phospholipid becomes rigid. It becomes hard. Now what happens if the cells become a bit too hard, the plasma membrane becomes too hard, substances can't pass through and the cell will start to experience stress because the cells now are unable to move their structure so this stress will cause the cell to break apart. So when the percentage is high, the cell become rigid. If the percentage of cholesterol is low, the cells become too fluid. So similar as how you put tissue inside water, you shake a bit and the tissue will start to break apart. So that's why it cannot be too fluid.
because if your cells are too fluid the plasma membrane or the phospholipid bilayer is too fluid it will break apart and all of your cell content will move out from the cells so next we go to our two protein structure that helps in transportation the first one and the second one so these are the two protein structure so the first protein structure here is actually the pore protein so this pore protein how do they carry out the transport of substance is that they only carry out specific substance So, for example, some of the specific substance that they carry are ions and glucose. So, in higher level, we notice that some of these um, pore protein, they have specific name. For example, we have the ion, the sodium channel and the potassium channel. So, the potassium channel only transport potassium ion. The sodium channel only transport sodium ion. Alright? And then we go with our... Next one, the carrier protein. Now, this carrier protein acts similar as how a Pac-Man would act. They will open their mouth, take in, close their mouth. Right? So, that's the carrier protein. So, the carrier protein, they are non-specific. So, they can change the shape of the protein structure to allow them to transport the substance across the plasma membrane. So, this non-specific nature of carrier protein allow it to carry different type of substance ranging from ions, going to um, glucose, amino acid, and the other sugar which consists of fructose and galactose all right so next we go with these two things that look like an antenna if you look on inside your book and that looks uh, like a long structure these two things are what they call as the lipoprotein and the glycoprotein so I'm sure you've heard of COVID as it is now the pandemic time. So inside the COVID, uh, during the COVID pandemic, you have heard of some virus that undergo mutation. So what they change in the mutation is these two things, the lipoprotein and the glycoprotein. These two things act as both the antigen and receptor for cells. So, on top of our cells, we also, similar to the virus, have our own specific lipoprotein and glycoprotein. And each cell has multiple lipoprotein, multiple glycoprotein. That's allow, that allow the cell to communicate between one and another. In high level, we call this as cell signaling. They inform other cells of changes that happens in their surrounding. So, this is all the structure of your plasma membrane now we're going to go to the transport system so the transportation include two different type we have the active transport and we have the passive transport so the difference between the active transport and the passive transport falls into three categories. The first category is the concentration gradient. So for concentration gradient, active transport, they go against the concentration. So it goes from the low concentration to the high concentration. It is transported against the concentration. Okay. So what happened here? This one, they go against concentration. It requires ATP for the substance to move into the cell the mitochondria will produce enough ATP to transport the substance over so the ATP is converted from ATP they will become ADP plus P 
phosphate. The ATP will break up. So our ATP is structured in this manner. We have the adenosine and surrounding, surrounding the adenosine are the phosphate. So they break one of the bond of this phosphate, releasing the energy. And now we have our ADP and our phosphate. Every time they break the bond between one atom or one molecule to another molecule, it breaks the bond. Every time you break a bond, you release energy. And this energy is used up to transport the substance over from outside of cell into the cell. From outside into the cell. Right? So they require ATP. And lastly, for active transport, it only requires one type of carrier, which is the carrier protein. Or the transport protein. Now, when we look at our passive transport, the passive transport is a bit opposite of our active transport, where it only moves following the concentration gradient. So it moves from the high concentration to the low concentration. So this one, they follow concentration gradient. And then, we do not require ATP. And lastly, it... Now, this is a bit special. Why? Because passive transport, they can transport in one of the three ways. So, they can either move through the phospholipid bilayer. They can move through the pore protein or they can move through the carrier protein. Right? So next, we're going to talk about how this transport is and I'll see you in the next part. Right. So now we're going to talk about the passive transport. We have three different passive transport. We have our osmosis, simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion. So we're going to learn in great depth for each type of transport. So firstly, about the osmosis. Osmosis comes from the word osmo, which is water. So osmosis is the transport of water. In chemistry, you learn that water has polarity. It has a positive polarity and a negative polarity. And this polarity allows the water to move through your phospholipid bilayer. So for osmosis, they are transported via phospholipid bilayer. And since it doesn't require uh, any ATP, okay, it's a passive transport, it also follow concentration gradient. So what happened here is that if you have a water molecule, And this water molecule is moving through the phospholipid bilayer. So we have our phospholipid bilayer here. So what happened here? The tail is hydrophobic in nature. But due to the water molecule having polarity, discharge of the water molecule allow the Phospholipid bilayer to conform its shape, to change its shape, to allow the water molecule to pass through. It changes the shape of the phospholipid bilayer by a bit, only to allow this water molecule to move from the outside of the cell into the cell, right? And then next, we go to our simple diffusion. So simple diffusion include the transport of gas. Vitamin Ade Fatty Acids and Glycerols 
Alright? So, what they do is that they are transported similar to osmosis. They are transported via the phospholipid bilayer. They require no ATP. 